Hey, welcome to Bifocal. We have an interesting show today. It's a little bit of a unique show for us. We have the CEO of Bounce Innovation Hub on, and he's going to talk us uh, talk to us about all the services and uh, the types of things that Bounce provides for local entrepreneurs and in the city of Akron. So stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. Today's show is going to be interesting. We have Doug Weintraub, CEO of Bounce Innovation Hub. He's agreed to come on the show, talk to us about uh, what Bounce is, services it provides, um, how it works with local entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurs, startup companies, etc. So, Doug, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad yeah. to be here. So, uh, I'd like to start with Bounce Innovation. How did it come up with the name? You know, I'd like to say there was some fancy process that some uh, deep meaning, some deep meaning. But unfortunately, it just kind of came about. I think the mayor's office threw about a bunch of names around. This was before my time, so when I got there, they had picked the name. But I think because of the rubber connection, all those types of things, I think it just kind of stuck. Ah, okay. I, I told him the story about uh, the old hippity hops, uh, Sun Rubber, and from Barberton was kind of a bouncy ball. So. Maybe that was it. Huh? Maybe that was it. So maybe give us an idea, high level, what is Bounce? What I know, I mean, I've been out on your website. I mean, it's kind of like an incubator, if people are familiar with an incubator. But walk us through a little bit about what it is. Well, you know, it's a unique asset for a community the size of Akron. And it is an incubator. It's an accelerator. It's really kind of a community um, spot where we can connect people with ideas to people who have kind of been there, done that, to people who just want to uh, learn about building a business, people who are looking for you know, added resources, people who need space, people who want to just kind of focus on their business and not necessarily some of the overheads of running a business. And um, it's been in Akron's portfolio for a while, and uh, it was just a unique time um, when they formed. When did it, when did it start? It started in, uh, January of 2018. And, uh, so it's relatively new. It's relatively <clears throat> new. It had been there as the Akron global business accelerator back in the nineties. Um, and it basically was a, an office kind of home for various types of businesses in Akron. And, uh, what happened is the new mayor came in, new administration. They, they saw this asset on the books of Akron and said, we're a city. What do we know about running an incubator, an accelerator program? What do we know about entrepreneurship? we got to figure out a different model. And that's what they did. They formed a 501c3, and it's led by Deb Hoover from the Bur Burton D. Morgan Foundation, which is a foundation focused on entrepreneurship mm -hmm. from the high school level all the way up to adults. And uh, from there, their next challenge was adding people to the board, which is a diverse board from all types of industry and businesses and entrepreneurship, and then find a CEO. So you're, you're funded by what? We're funded uh, three primary funding sources. We have um, the state. There's some federal funding, corporate support and funding, foundational funding, and then our operational support from the programs and rents and yeah. all those types of things. So, so how did you get involved? Where did Doug fit into this? You know, I, Doug is an entrepreneur at heart. Uh, Doug loves real estate, companies, uh, all those types of things. And um, the timing was just kind of right. I had probably finished uh, my umpteenth number of golf rounds and said, I need to do something different. And I really felt that I had kind of disconnected from the entrepreneurial world when I started many, many years ago. And uh, I just thought there had to be something a little bit more <clears> challenging, <throat> given my age and uh, my uh, aggression to help people build companies. So um, I sat down with the board and I knew many of the board members, but I interviewed like anybody else did. Uh, and I also met with the mayor, who I had never met before, and talked about what his goals were for a project like this. Yeah. Now, your background, you mentioned you were an entrepreneur. You, you've owned several companies. 
Yeah, I've owned uh, a number of companies. And in a real years. estate business. A real estate so business. So there, there were a lot of synergies here. A lot of synergies. Technology. Uh-huh. You've been in technology. Most of my career is focused around technology or something to do with software. So you checked, you probably checked a lot of the boxes. Yeah, I checked a lot of the boxes. And I also had, you know, I lived in Akron my whole life. I grew up on the west side, went to high school locally, and never really operated a business in Akron. And um, it was just a unique opportunity to kind of get back into the ball game. Yeah. So you became CEO when? Uh, March of 2018. And it was formed in Jan. You said January. It was January okay, so of twenty eighteen. Shortly after. Right. Right after that. So, in fact, um, you know, the city had worked on a major project, getting some funding uh, for the first floor of Bounce when when I walked in. So that was a pretty exciting project for me, which was changing kind of the operational aspect of what the building was and what it could be. So for me, it was kind of a new beginning. So when I walked in. Uh, I had actually been to Bounce as a consultant for Jumpstart to help some of the companies. And the, actually, the person there said to me, you know, we're looking for a CEO. You'd be a good CEO. Why don't you apply? So it's kind of an unusual situation. Yeah. I went home. I kind of said to my wife, I said, you know, this might be kind of interesting. So instead of becoming a co- consultant, I just became the CEO. And yeah. uh, I walked in. There was only one other employee. Uh, that was there. So you were truly there from the ground up. I was really, yeah, we were really lucky. And I got to believe it's pretty diverse, which is probably up your alley. As far as, yeah. Your interest and all of that. It's extremely eclectic. So I was able to uh, get in for a couple months and learn the community, learn the leaders, understand what they're after, understand how Akron works a little bit before we started this major um, campaign to hire people, build a staff, and also a huge uh, construction project on the first floor of Bounce. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the building. So the building's uh, one of the old BF Goodrich uh, buildings in the, in the complex down there, over 2 million square feet when it was in its heyday. Tons of people worked down there. Yeah. Um, I mean, BF Goodrich in itself, you know, was wooed to Akron by a bunch of entrepreneurs and provided them capital to start that. And look what happened to Akron as far as the rubber capital is concerned. So uh, this is one of the buildings that was donated back to the city. So it was a huge, it's 300,000 square feet. Bounce occupies 300,000. 300, we have the whole building, nine floors, 300,000 square feet. Um, it is built unbelievably, solid as a rock and and uh, the systems are old, but they're, they've been updated. So there's been a lot of, you know, expenditures in the building yeah. over the years. Well, I had the opportunity to, to uh, come inside the, just the first floor there. Right. And you felt like you were walking into a very modern uh, space. You had a cap, there was a deli cafeteria type yep. place over there. And I mean, it was, it was very modern. All the furniture was modern and very up to date. Yeah, that was part of the project. So that was three and a half million dollars of expenditures that we were able to take from the front door to the back door and knock every wall down. And basically we had a complete shell. And then we, you know, we were able to make some changes in the design. You know, the city went so far in the design work and then we kind of took over myself and our COO, Jessica Sublet, and worked with um, a designer that we hired, the Hasenstab Group. Uh, it was the architects. Uh, Hazel Tree Interiors did our um, work as well. And we went to town on building, you know, a modern day incubator, uh, accelerator space, co-working space on the first floor of Bounce. So walk me through companies. Like somebody who doesn't know anything about Bounce, how would they even know you exist? Mm-hmm. What type of company would come to you? And what what are you what are they getting? And you mentioned several types of company. I mean, you meant you mentioned startups, accelerators. What's that look like? Well, every business starts with one employee. It doesn't make a difference what it is, right? You you, you start with one. You start with an idea, um, and that's really what Bounce is. It's a place that you take your idea and you build on it. So some people come. Uh, with you know regular funding, some people come with an idea. Some people come with a thought. When you say they come with regular funding, what do you mean? Well, they come funded. They come with some capital, okay. angel capital, bank funding, 
uh, grants. So you could have a you could have a, a single entrepreneur come in, mm-hmm. but you could also have somebody come in and have some funding behind them. Yeah, I mean we've had all different levels, and so the first thing is there's we have multiple programs uh, at Bounce. So when we first started, Bounce was primarily um, associated with tech companies, software and medical device. What drove that? That was really the funding mechanism that came from the state of Ohio. And there's seven okay. criteria. And that's really what drove the types of businesses that were in bounce. And, you know, you'd make application. There's an application process. You go through it and you get accepted in. And then you set up your lab. You have a software company. You start hiring people. You, you build your business. And, you know, businesses are all different types of sizes from one employee to 20, 25 employees. Um, so the programs that we have now also accommodate non-tech companies as so well. So could it be any type of company now? It can be any type of company. Any type of company. So what is Bounce providing? I'm a new guy. I'm coming in. I got this idea. I interview with you. What's the interview look like? Well, you'd come in through three programs. You'd come in through um, the incubator, which is actually physical space in the building. So you make application. You come in, we meet with you. So there's a progression. There's a progression of where there's, I have to, everyone has to start. At the everybody same starts somewhere. So it depends on the business. So if okay. you're looking for space, physical space on floors two to nine, you'll come in with a business plan, an existing business. You have one employee of five employees. You need space. You need a lab. And you'd make application. We'd meet with you and we'd show you space and you take space. It's a, a one year lease. A lab is what? Uh, like a wet lab. Uh, for a, a biotech project, okay. um, it can be all types, medical devices. Uh, it just depends on what the you know what you're working on. Or you could be a software company. You could come in that way through the incubator. We also have a software accelerator program, which is a person who has a, an idea for a software application that you come into our program for training. Now, that doesn't require space. That's just a, a training program that you'd come to Bounce and you'd meet with many of our entrepreneurs and residents, which I'll get to and talk about that. Um, so that's a program. We also have space that accommodates those, those And the folks. training would be what? Like what type of training? Uh, you build an MVP. Uh, we teach you how to do customer discovery. Uh, you build the application, the marketing, the pricing. Because you know, a lot of these guys are probably technical guys. Well, they're either technical guys or they're marketing people. So we'll connect marketing and technical people together to build an MVP. Or they've built, you know, they have an idea or they'll come in as a tech team. They'll come in with a non-tech guy and they're coming with a technical person. And the two will work together to build their company. So we literally are there from the ground up. Okay. And then the non-tech side, which is what we call the GROW program. So it's generating real opportunity and wealth. And these programs are for... It's an acronym. For, it's an acronym. Uh, for minorities and women, primarily. And... Um, this is a program to me that is really special because it was never at bounce, but it gives people an opportunity to kind of feel um, re-engaged to the community, be a part of the community. Because it was a facility that didn't accept non-tech businesses. And a business is a business, whether you're making muffins or whether you're cutting hair or you're a restaurant, you're an entrepreneur. And it's exciting to see these folks who are working maybe day jobs. They come in in the evening, and we have multiple layers of training. Uh, we even brought in an outside program called Mortar, which is a program to help entrepreneurs uh, along the way of building their business. So there's, these are actual formal programs founded, uh, funded through the foundations. And that's, that's just part of the service that bounces provide. These are all parts of the service. So, so the, the entrepreneur is not paying extra. They're for- paying a, a, a minimal fee, maybe a couple hundred dollars for um, the mortar program. They're paying maybe $75 for the manual for another program. If they're in the incubator, they're paying for their leases, of course. Um, and if they're a software accelerator, they're paying a minimal amount for some, sur- some supplies, those types of things. But they also get, and this is a core component, an entrepreneur in residence um, with these businesses. So that is a seasoned entrepreneur, investor, uh, leader of a business, uh, somebody who's exited a business successfully and has decided that they want to contribute their services to that business. 
So we, Bounce, pays their services, and they are provided to the entrepreneur at no cost to help them build their business. They're like and a mentor, a coach. They're, they're a mentor. They're a coach. Um, they're a shit stir. They're, they're somebody who can help a business get to the next level. Because think about it. If you've never built a business, you don't know what it takes. You don't know to, what you don't know. Exactly. You don't know what you don't know. And we've assembled a whole group. We have 13 part-time um, advisors, coaches. Uh, we have 12 full-time Staff now, do people. those advisors and coaches are they assigned to specific businesses, and they so that coach stays with that business? Yes, they're based on their expertise. So, our entrepreneurs and residents have different expertise, depending on whether they're software, they could be manufacturing, they could be medical, uh, and we provide those services to that company. And it's it's exciting because. It's like falling out of bed. I mean, they will connect an entrepreneur to an entrepreneur in residence, and they're off and running. They're part of their board meetings. They're helping them through raising money. They're helping them design their uh, marketing programs, helping them with their forecasts. So they're, they're a coach, like you said. They're a mentor. They're, so, they're a shoulder to cry on. There's somebody that they can call for help, for introductions, for connections. Um, and I think that's the critical po point. I mean, these are people who you could pay hundreds of dollars an hour yeah. for consulting. And Bounce has made arrangements to bring these folks in to work with the various businesses. And that's for all the different businesses, whether it's the software accelerator, if you're an, uh, a tenant of the building in the incubator, or you're part of the grow program. Along the way, we also have a mentor program. So, you know, we got a guy like Dan Harsh who has an expertise in the CRM space, the call center space, maybe wants to work on the sales side with some of these entrepreneurs, he could volunteer his time as well. So there's some connections there also. So how many, how many businesses could you have in at one time? Well, some of the businesses don't require space, but we have right now, I, I checked before I left, it was 118 different businesses that we're working with. Some of which about 50 or so have physical space some of which are on our first floor, which we should talk about on the generator space. So it's co the co-working space. So they either have a dedicated desk or co-working desk, or they have an office. We have these small little pod and offices. You said you have some that don't occupy any. And some that just don't, they have the restaurant, they have their barbershop, they have all different types of businesses. I mean, I was on a uh, Zoom call with our mortar class, which just started last week. It's 15 businesses. They're all women. They're all black women, except for one guy, one white guy in the class. And what was so exciting to me is you had, there was women with babies on their laps that are sitting here trying to learn how to build a business. And to these get, are probably all kinds of businesses. These are all kinds of businesses. These are healthcare businesses, cleaning businesses. These are restaurants, out of your home businesses. catering, all out of your home businesses. And the help that we're providing, I think, is critical to their success. We're giving them what is it like, you know, what does it take to open a bank account? What, how, what, how do you okay, form so a company? Okay, so let's take somebody like that. We'll just take that okay. subgroup right now. Yeah. Okay. How do they pay for that, sir? Because they're not occupying space. So how do they get they, involved in that? They pay uh, the mortar program. It's 200, I think it's $295. That's all they pay. We pay the rest. I mean, we cover the rest. We cover the services. We cover the resources that come in. We cover, you know, when we met in person, there's food, all that kind of stuff. Um, we're, we're trying to help the overall goal, with, which is when I met with the mayor, which is creating successful businesses that create successful jobs. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we're trying to do. So that's, we, that's the goal of Bounce, to create a successful business. Create a successful business that one day will move out of Bounce into Main Street and or that, that will hire a number of people as well. Maybe stay in Bounce for a period of years and then move out. But So how, how long... How do you know how long to keep a company in bounce? You know, it's, um, I get that question all the time. And I think you just know. I mean, when a business comes to us, we, first of all, we know how their businesses are doing. 
Um, we know they need help or they don't need help. You're saying the financials. The financials. We know they know how to operate their sales teams. We know how they know how to market. They've reached the capacity of their space. They're jumping out of the nest and they're flying. Yeah, they want to. They want us to rehab their space. That's like a telltale sign that it's time to go. And, it, and it's nothing wrong. It's grad. We call it yeah. graduation. Yeah. We call it moving on. It's like you said. They accomplished what you needed to accomplish. Which is they they didn't spend a lot of money on their rent. They got expertise. They raise capital. They they have uh, a lot of employees. They've seen weddings and funerals and raising kids and all those types of stuff. And they're they're just ready as a company to kind of move on to Main Street. Yeah. That to me is an exciting day when they. It's it's kind of upsetting because we're literally throwing a tenant out, uh, not throwing them out, but we're there. It's yeah. time to leave, and yeah. they move on. So. Walk me through the, the interviewing process, the qualification process. How does how does Bounce determine, yep, that company's worthy of coming in? They've met certain criteria. What's that look like? Well, all the different programs have different interviewing processes, application processes, information gathering from our perspective. So if you're a tenant in the building, you know, we gotta make sure that you have capital. We got to make sure that you're going to not just move in and then move out a month later. We want to make sure that you kind of have some ability to manage your business. Want to make sure the idea is somewhat good. Do you have to be involved in bounce to be a tenant in the building? No, no, because our whole the whole first floor that I mentioned before that build out there, which by the way took a year, and it culminated in May of 2020, 2019, uh, was our uh, opening. We had a thousand people that came to the building. We had 12,000 visitors in 2019. The year before it was 2,000 visitors. Oh, wow. Just to show you kind of a huge difference, right? Yeah. Um, so um, the first floor itself, so it's a um, <clears throat> dedicated co-working space or just a regular co-working space. We have small offices that anybody can rent because if, if you're upstairs, you got to fit into that seven type criteria that I mentioned from the state on the tech um, side, which is software, biotech, all that kind of stuff. Okay. But we have space on the first floor. And then we have an eSports uh, area, which is uh, used by Akron U and, and other, other groups. We have- It's like a health club? No, it's actually a eSports with computers and oh. screens and they're playing games, basically. Um, we have an event space, we have a maker space, we have a uh, cafeteria you mentioned, Remarkable Cafe, uh, Coffee and Cafe, and then we have uh, meeting rooms that you can rent out. So all that is open to the public. You uh, get a, either get a, a day pass, a week pass, a month pass, and there it's not a lot of money considering there's internet, there's coffee, there's copiers. Yeah. And so in today's day and age with what's going on with offices, it's a great location if you don't want to work out of your well, house. Well, you know, there's 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 all kinds of talk that there's this big um, movement of people wanting to move into the city, especially the millennials. Yep. They've been wanting to move in. So have you seen some of that? Have you seen some we're population just, growth? In Akron, we're just starting to see, you know, some of the people move on the north side. And now they're starting to inch their way back towards us on the south side. And, um, you know, with this space, you literally could be your company could be in California and you could work from Akron, you know? So we have a, a, a number of uh, people that come in the space that their companies are based uh, a couple of them in out of town overseas and they just love the space. They come there and that's kind of their office. Yeah. They can, you can get mail there. Um, there's a receptionist there, there's food, you know, there's esports, yeah. there's event space. So you could hold uh, a meeting, a get together, there's the maker space. You can make stuff. You can learn how to operate a laser cutter. So you can have all the benefits of a large building with a lot of the amenities yeah. without really paying for all that or committing to all that. Yeah, and in today's day and age with offices the way they are, you just come and go and you don't have to commit. I mean, that's the best part of Bounce is other than the floors upstairs, there's really not a lot of major commitment as far as leasing space. Yeah. And, you know, downstairs in the first floor, the one unique thing that we did in, in um, to represent the space is we had a project with um, our designer to actually go out and hire local artists. So we have 170 original art pieces, which are paintings, 
their murals, their pictures, even some of the desks were made locally uh, by about 70 artists. So it's all local. I figured, you know, that was the best way of getting the local yeah. team of artists involved. And we paid for that artwork. So we wanted to make sure that they were they were made whole. We so didn't it's ask pretty for much 100 percent Akron run, Akron supported. I even have a soapbox derby car hanging above one of the uh, conference rooms in there. So it's it's all Akron. I mean, it's BF yeah. Goodrich, rubber capital of the world. You got the uh, uh, we have a piece of the dirigible. The, the blimp that's in there because the um, Lighter Than Air Society has their collection at Bounce upstairs. And then we have a soapbox derby car hanging so on the So how common is this in other cities? It, it's common, um, but typically run by, you know, pretty major groups. Um, you won't find what's unique in Akron, which I give, you know, the mayor's office and the foundations and on all the credit to the leaders of this community is Akron has one building. It's one spot. And it's, it's a place that everybody knows. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're looking about, in, you're thinking about innovation, you're thinking about raising some capital, you're thinking about meeting people about new ideas. It's one place. If you go to other cities, it's multiple buildings across the town. Uh, in Akron, it's, it's one place. Now, was that by design? Did no. Look, it just happened. To it just happened. I think that's part of the whole impetus with the mayor said, let's make, let's, let's bring it all to one spot. We have a magnificent building and everybody's kind of come to love the building. Uh, we, you know, we work with um, our energy folks, Akron Energy, which is behind us on innovative techniques for uh, steam and chilled water. Um, so when we build things out, we're using really cool technology to make the building run very efficiently. So I'm proud to say when we built when we built the first floor, 30,000 square feet, our energy bills never changed, which is amazing. So 30,000 square feet we added, which wasn't air conditioned, it was heated, but we had no no change in cost uh, because we used really efficient products. Yeah, uh, and then not to mention all the people that are that are able to use this facility. So what would be the size of how big could a company get and stay involved? With bounds, we have some companies about 25, 30 people. Um, oh, wow, there, and that's it, it just depends on um, so these what companies trying to get up into the millions of dollars. Of oh, revenue. yeah, we have companies in the millions of dollars that are there that one day soon will, will leave. Um, some of them, you know, we uh, it just depends on what their, what their plans are. With COVID, everything changed, the whole, the whole. Everything changed at the building, unfortunately. You know, like we, every place else. Like every place else in the world, it it, it brought things to a standstill. Are um, you seeing any change in that? I mean, how is it now versus ninety days ago? Well, what we did was all of our programs went virtual. So as soon as you know we had to shut down, uh, everything went via Zoom, via you know you name the uh, the choice for video conferencing, and and that has worked out great. But the get-togethers, which is where a lot of ideas are exchanged, came to a screeching halt. And then, you know, we kind of opened. Um, but we had about 60 members in our uh, co-working space. And a lot of those members were forced to go back home. They were forced to s figure it out from their houses. And a lot, all of them have come back yet. So mm -hmm. it's been slow on our first floor. I'm hoping by the fall they'll come back. Summer is typically a slow period. And this is, I guess, a little bit personal, but have you seen some companies fail through yes. this? You have seen some of that. We've seen some of that. I mean, we've gotten notice a couple companies, but, you know, I think what it is is it's it's this kind of the final straw Yeah. that made them decide yep. that it was time to change and move on. But we've also had a number of companies that have expanded. So our net net is actually more space taken um, during really? the COVID. Yeah. I mean, we we operated because we had a number of essential businesses at Bounce. We were still able to operate. Yep. And uh, we we did lease some space to businesses that were, you know, doing things. We have a, a company called Visual Gardens in there that grows um, lettuce, basil, and microgreens. Um, and they had to operate. You know, they, they weren't selling to restaurants, but they were selling to grocery stores. Isn't it funny how, specifically with COVID, how some companies are so negatively impacted and at the same time, 
there's this whole sector over here that's so positively impacted. And we had one company that was making uh, wound dressings, a company called Nelderm. They pivoted to face shields. Uh, and that company is going to do incredibly well in a business that when we met them to bring them in was just getting started. And it's incredible. They're fully, they're going to be able to fully fund their business now as a result of making a product that when we met with them, it wasn't even a thought. Yeah. Uh, and that's, what's amazing. I mean, a lot of businesses have thrived. Do you see a lot of those kind of stories where a business came in with one idea and as it starts gelling, it ends up pivoting somewhere else and this ends up taking off and nobody really knew that's the direction it was going to go. If you ask any entrepreneur, they'll say they, they've had to pivot their business a number of times. So maybe entrepreneurs are just built for a COVID world because yeah. they're able to pivot very quickly. They're able to change their business model. Um, and that's why, you know, when I make investments in, in entrepreneurs, I, oh, it's either the jockey or the horse. And I'm the jockey guy because, um, you know, the yeah. horse can come and go, but the jockey can figure out how to change things around. Yeah. So um, that is definitely the case. We've seen a ton of pivoting, a ton, a ton of changing. And you go, you know, you go where the puck is, right? That's the old story. And that's what these businesses have done. Yeah. What are, um, what are some of the challenges for bounce? Uh, trying to be everything to what everybody wants. Um, we're actually undergoing a strategic plan because I think we've been extremely successful um, along the way, but it, it, sometimes we get ourselves into too many things and we can't handle the volumes that are created. Um, and we want to make sure that we're servicing the community the way they expect. So we're doing this great strategic plan. We have our community leaders involved in the interviewing process and our board and, you know, our board of advisors. And we're, we're, we're making sure that we're doing what everybody thinks that we should be doing. What do you think the awareness is? Uh, it's growing. With the non-tech part of the business added, I think the awareness um, has exploded and the use has exploded. I mean, 118 companies. When I was first there, I think there was 40. So, and, and those are all types of businesses, but, um, and I think we have a better, Im I think we have a greater impact in some of these non-tech businesses because some of these people are trying to figure out how to get ahead and they need the help. They don't know where to turn. Where, uh, like when you do your marketing for awareness, how does bounce market? How do you, how do you market yourself? Uh, we market ourselves, you know, it depends on the programs, who we're marketing to, um, how we market. different markets. We have a large number of markets. We have a, a great marketing uh, uh, leader on our team, and she's um, getting us out in the social media world. She's, you know, we're doing paper, we're doing digital. There's all types of ways that we can get this out to people. And, you know, we're in the what we call the south side of Akron. So a lot of the businesses around have come, you know, people have wandered in. Because what is have, the geography? How far out can people be and come in? Uh, it, it, we serve the area. I mean, you know, Summit County is huge, so we're right in the thick of it. So it's not just Akron. You don't have to be an Akron business. I mean, we have people there from Cogga Falls, Stowe, Barberton, Norton, Twinsburg. We have people coming all over the place. I mean, there are people that have actually relocated from north. To come down, uh, yeah, to be part to be part of bounce because of the facility, because of the space. You know, our pricing is such. You know, we have air conditioned space, non air conditioned space, lab space, regular space. The space can rent anywhere from five dollars a square foot to thirteen dollars a square foot, depending on different th reasons. What would be a typical square foot rate in downtown Akron right now? Do you have Do you have, Do you have an idea? I don't have an idea, but uh, it's got to be, be more than thirteen. Oh. A lot more than 13. Yeah. A lot more than 13. And you get services. Yeah. And there's internet. So we brought in Fairlawn Gig, and the internet speed is incredible, uh, which is something that we needed. Parking is easy. You know, there is parking. You pay parking. It's very, very low, yeah. like a dollar a day. So is Bounce in a situation right now where you have capacity, and it's a matter of making the market more and more aware of of your services? We have, we have capacity. I mean, we, I don't think there'd be a, 
in the startup world, and I don't think. define capacity. I mean, obviously, cap, cap, capacity we're space. About, we're about 60% physical space. Okay. But then you have other other considerations, right? Staff yeah. and. Yeah, those types of things. The entrepreneurs and residents. We can only afford so many resources to be able to supply. And, and we want every business to have points of contact, entrepreneurs and residents to help them with their business. So if I should have such a problem where where we have too many businesses and we have to figure out a way to raise more capital, which is what we'll do to serve these businesses. But you have capacity now. We have we have capacity People could, now. You have they could um, come in. Right now they're they're taking applications for the mortar program, uh, which will start in late summer. We have space in our software accelerator, which is a, like a rolling admissions. We have space in the incubator, as I said, there's there's forty percent capacity as far as space is concerned. So, you know, we can build space for anywhere from 500 square feet to about 7,000 square feet. Now, you mentioned you have, um, what do you call it, entrepreneurs and residents? Yep. Okay. And then you mentioned you had some mentors, volunteer. Right. Tell me a little bit about Bounce's staff. Uh, great staff. Um it's, uh, we have marketing resources. We have a leader who runs the incubator accelerator. We have a leader who runs our generator floor, which is the first floor. These are people These employed are, by have, Bounce. Yes, we have 12 full-time people. And remember, when I first started, there were two, myself and Jessica Sublet, which is the COO, who had been there with the prior administration. And then we've added resources, uh, ACE Epps, which runs our uh, Director of uh, inclus Inclusive Entrepreneurship, which is the whole grow concept, which Ace is great. He's brought in an incredible number of people into Bounce. Uh, and I credit that whole program with a, a guy like Ace. Um, and then we have support resources behind all those people. Okay. So what's a day in the life for Doug at Bounce? What's well, it consist of? Pre-COVID, it was, you know, running around, meeting with entrepreneurs, um, raising capital to help, you know, raising donations, for Bounce, to help support the programs, working well, with the foundation. Walk us through a little bit of that. How, what's that look like? How, reason well, what's you know, like? we had met with a number of companies about providing capital to support uh, Bounce in as we added these programs, because we need the money to help support. We're a 501c3. And so we've worked with banks. We've worked with local companies. We have a um, presenting partner program. Folks like, uh, and on that list is the city of Akron, of course, um, uh, the Akron Children's Hospital, Bridgestone, Medical Mutual. And then we have donations from other companies as well along the way, which have donated to specific programs. The Burton D. Morgan uh, Foundation, the GAR Foundation, the Akron Community Foundation, all those types of organizations. Uh, we got huge support from Summit County when we first you know, built out the building as well. And then there's been folks who have supported us, you know, when we had our open house and as we build out the space. What is something right now that you're sitting back and you're saying, hey, we need this. This is the next step for Bounce. What's that look like? Uh, it's probably the ability of uh, expanding some of the non-air conditioned space and seeing if we can get back to getting the co-working back going. And, you know, there's there's a floor on the second, the space on the second floor. Co-working is shared space. The shared space. How's that going to work in COVID? Well, we're, you know, we're socially distanced. We're still using masks. Um, so you shared space doesn't necessarily mean I'm sharing an office. No, I'm no, sharing no. A, I'm sharing physical. Uh, you're you're sharing room. a desk and, and you're, you're spread apart. You know, bounce is huge. It's open. By the way, any of the listeners come by, we'll get you set up and you can co-work, you can see what it's like. But And then we have the smaller offices, which are one, two type person offices. Well, you just brought up something kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. If I were interested, could you just said, stop by and we'll hook you up and let you ch test it out. Yeah. How, how's that work? You just walk in the front door, you'll see Lauren. She's right at the front desk. Tell her you're here to try it out. And, uh, you know, we have some special promotions that we're running to get people back in the space. So what do they try out? What, what, what would that well, look you like? Well, you walk in, you, you grab a desk, you hook up to the internet, I you use a, a copier, Coke. you get coffee you, with, at no cost. And Diet Coke and a Danish. and You go over to the cafe, Dan Remark's there, he'll make you, make you breakfast, lunch, 
Um, you get a smoothie, you know, and you go to work. You're not working at home. You want to try a different environment. You want to try something new. It's really the trend. I mean, yeah. um, there's even the ability I've been approached by some companies that want to meet like on a monthly basis in a different spot. And they want to just come in and bring all their employees and use some of the meeting rooms. As soon as we can get past the 10 person limit on a meeting, <clears throat> we'll be able to do that. Um, and, you know, you can have board meetings there, get togethers. It's a place to stimulate ideas. Well, it, it's you, you've kind of alluded to it a couple of times. It's almost like it's the wave of the future. I Every, really think everything's it is. going to virtual. It's, it appears right. right now. You have all these companies that are mandatory go home, and now you have at least half of these companies, if not more, that are deciding: Am I really going to bring my staff back? Mm -hmm. So they're setting up for being able to operate at home. You have these same tenants that are trying to offload their lease space now, and if they're successful at doing that they still have a need for some of the things you're talking about. They want to have a company meeting, mm -hmm. right? And they don't want to do it at a hotel. They want to do it someplace a little more maybe business oriented, or they want to have a staff meet. They want to have a brainstorming session. They want the internet. They want some PCs or places to plug in, right? They want that stuff. So it really does seem like it's kind of the wave. Yeah, we have, everything's wire, wireless. You know, we have these huge TVs. Some of the conference rooms have 100-inch TVs. So you can do, you know, uh, presentations. And it's, it's, it's an innovative space. It gets the juices flowing. It, 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 it's not just four walls. Yeah. There's windows. You know, there's high ceilings. There's the old bricks there, the pictures. You just, energy yeah. is what it is. And I think... In today's day and age, you know, never would anybody expect that all these offices would close, people would go home. Well, they're not going to open up and people aren't going to go back the same way. It's going to change. It has to. And spaces like this is, the, is really the wave of the future. So for Akron to have a space like this is really unique. Yeah. Uh, and it's a place that, you know, can only grow. So my desire would be, you know, to continue to add resources, to have, you know, the the capital, um, the money that we can raise as donations to support hiring more entrepreneurs and residents, be able to build more space out, be able to accommodate more entrepreneurs, be able to serve more of these businesses that, that need help in trying to How difficult is it for you to stay current with the needs of your market? From a technology standpoint and you know that type of thing? We actually have been pretty lucky. The mortar program came out of Cincinnati. Um, and it had an expertise in serving minority businesses and women-owned businesses. Um, we've been able to bring some programs from various places. And frankly, our entrepreneurs and residents are expert when it comes to help building businesses. So they're used to dealing with board members, dealing with uh, finance companies, trying to raise capital, you know, trying to figure out how to, what kind of software to track your CRM, all those types of things. Yeah. Well, I'm going to summarize back what I've heard. Okay. You tell me if, if, if I'm accurate. <clears throat> that way, if someone's listening, yep. I think it's, always, it's good to kind of pull it all together. Bounce, it's, a, it's an incubator. It's an accelerator. It's open for all kinds of businesses, whether you simply need space, whether you need mentorship, coaching, consulting services from people who have been there, done that. You need technology. You need labs. You need facility amenities that you're not going to be able to get on your own. You need um, capital. Somebody can help you maybe how to go out and raise that capital. You have capital, but you really don't know how I'm going to leverage it. How I'm going to, or how I'm going to utilize. You got people to help you do that. So it's kind of this melting pot of pretty much anything I need as a startup business. I have every resource at my disposal from physical resources to people resources to technology resources that are going to help me each step get to where I need to get to with as minimal hurdles as possible because I'm working with people who have been there and done that. Is that kind of a high level, yeah. ten thousand foot view? That's a perfect uh, commercial. That's exactly what we are. That's yeah. That's what it is. That's when you walk in the door. That's exactly what you should think of. What you just said. 
So how do we get your name out more? If you got 60% capacity, what, where's your struggle? To, is it because your name's out that bounce isn't as... Well, I don't think 60% means that, you know, we, we don't have to be full. No, to, I understand. But I mean, I think... But there's, there has to be a lot of businesses out there right now that could utilize you. And I'm guessing they're just probably not aware. Yeah, I mean, we, we communicate with all the local leaders, all the different groups that are out there, just getting the name out. Um, the community leader, the, the, um, the staff that's out in the community, there's groups that we work with like Jumpstart and groups, you know, in, in, uh, throughout Northeast Ohio. So Jumpstart Ohio. still exists over here. Yeah, that, that's up in, uh, in the north. Um, they help us tremendously. They're part of a, the program we call the ESP program through the state. Um, and, uh, you know, they've been extremely instrumental in providing resources as well along the way. Um, and so it's just a matter of time. I mean, think about it, Dan. We, we just opened our first floor a year ago. COVID hit, you know, it wasn't even a year. Yeah. We weren't even open a year. You know, we were at 60 or so um, members there. We had grown to 118 businesses at Bounce Now. We started with like 40. We were probably at 40% capacity. So we've grown, you know, 20% in a 300,000 square foot building. That's 60,000 square feet of space. So we were headed yeah. exactly there. Now, some of our space, you know, as I said, my dream is to be able to finish and build that out to be air conditioned you know, environmentally provided space um, and then be able to expand the co-working even to the second floor. We have a, aspirations to build out our maker space. So we don't really kind of talk about that, but um, there's a whole community of trying to make things as well, which we can do at Bounce. And make things like what you... Uh, you know, right now we're making face physical. shields. Something physical. We have a program and a connection with Magnet uh, on the, you know, building out a physical product. So we help you with that. So if you are going to like manufacture, you want to manufacture something, you want to start with a prototype. If it's a medical device, uh, whatever it may be, we, we work with Magnet uh, to do that as well. So one of the great things about Bounce is um, kind of the coordination and the relationships about all these different programs out there. We can help navigate. Yeah. I call that the ecosystem. And I got involved in, uh, when, we, when Jumpstart was started in 2003. And it was scorched earth. Okay, there was no ability to kind of coordinate all these resources. And there's been a lot of resources that had have developed over the years. And that's one of the things that we do a good job of is making sure that we bring in the resources yeah. to help these entrepreneurs as well. Well, that's kind of what I what I'm hearing is the real re is the real benefit. It's connections. It's connection. You know, I know when you know you started businesses. I've started businesses. Yep. You're kind of an island out there. You, you, you don't really know where to go, and, and you, you become the gerbil in the wheel, and you can be working 90 mile an hour. Yep. It doesn't mean, doesn't mean you're working smart. It doesn't mean you're working. It doesn't even mean you're going down the right road. We call it a collision. Okay? So it's, and that's another reason why we think it's absolutely necessary for large companies to be involved with Bounce. It's the collision of large companies with small companies. Yep. And because large companies, it's hard for them to maneuver. It's hard to turn that And they ship. utilize these small companies. Small companies can, can change on a dime. And so if you get the two working together, that collision mm -hmm. is success. And that happens at Bounce. We see that. We're part of that. We're bringing in these larger yeah. companies to do that. Yeah. Um, well, there's probably times where you, you're, you're connecting a, a, a startup company here with a larger company that has a need for them right out of the gate. Yeah. And we have large companies that come to us and say, okay, like Bridgestone, they're, they sit in our space. Um, they're there. They were at least there before COVID once a week. And they're talking to the companies. They're looking at new technology. They're trying to say, you know, is there a, a case of maybe using something here or there? And that's what that's all about. Akron Children's Hospital, we work with their innovation team. Uh, we have an entrepreneur in residence, Mike Kiritakis, who does a lot of medical work with them. Uh, and that's been a, a wonderful relationship. You know, we're excited about that kind of stuff. Yeah. And that's how you build a community. That's how you build innovation. That's how you build, you know, startups. Yeah. And that's what Akron is really focused on. I think really what else is on. kind of neat is once these, these companies and these entrepreneurs go through the program, they're part of the ecosystem now. Yeah, the, the ecosystem is a developed ecosystem in Northeast Ohio. I went to a conference one time in Kansas City, and um, I, 
people were thinking about, you know, they didn't really have a good handle on their ecosystem. Um, but I, being from Northeast Ohio, frankly, in Ohio, we have a, we've done a great job of identifying the resources within the local ecosystems to support these companies. And as long as the companies and the entrepreneurs are open to ideas and to recommendations and to changes and to challenges, then they're going to thrive. You know, when I started my first company in 1986, this didn't exist. Your, your ecosystem was your attorney, was your lawyer, your was wife, your accountant, and most importantly, your wife. Yep. I mean, she's the one at the pillow time that you'd cry or ask and see what's your opinion. You, you vented. You and if it wasn't for her then or him or whatever it may be, then uh, you didn't have anywhere to go. Now it's changed. But there still is that importance yep. of, of uh, the significant other to help you. But they got more technical resources. But there's more technical resources. And then you can weigh it uh, yeah. along the way. Well, I, I, think it's, I think it's awesome, you know, going down the path of starting a business or two and you just see the benefits there, you know, and some of the... Um, the hurdles and the walls that maybe could have been prevented by being part of something like that. You know, I think it's awesome, awesome what you're doing. Thank what you. drives Doug? Uh, what, what drives me is just seeing these businesses grow. You know, I've been very lucky along the way to have worked with a number of entrepreneurs to build wealth and um, successful companies, which is fine. What really drives me is when I see, when I saw the, um, the mortar program, when I saw a woman with a baby on her lap attending the program because she wants to better herself, because she wants to, to figure out what That's to what do with about. her business. That's what it's about. And, you know, up to now, we never really had programs to be able to do that. So I know that's not tech and I'm, you know, a tech guy, but to me, that's, really important because we're helping all types of businesses yep. grow. Not and those, every business is tech. Not every business is tech. You can't survive if they were all tech. Now, granted, tech is where everything's headed, but you know, we, we can't we couldn't survive without the non tech uh, businesses around us. So yep. um, all types of businesses helping them grow. You know, I'd love to, you know, kind of pop in on a, a training session or make a recommendation or make a connection. Um, from the vast databases that see I have blossom. and see it blossom, uh, make a make a special phone call for an entrepreneur if I can help them. Uh, it's hard because there's a lot going on, a lot of companies, a lot of thought process, uh, helping some of the businesses pivot, you know, walking around and yeah. kind of walking in on them and saying, or my, my favorite is when I get them in the elevator and I look at them and say, okay, what's the elevator pitch for your business? You know, you're on the ninth floor, we're going on to the first, let me hear it. Yep. I bet so you get a fun. lot of uh, deers in the head, deer in the headlights. I get a lot of that. Yeah, but a lot of the businesses, you know, they know what's coming and they're yeah. ready. Yeah. What uh, one thing we didn't talk about is uh, what's the accountability level for the companies? It's being huge. In the it's it's actually huge. We we track every hour in in our Salesforce database um, through this. The state requires it really for the funding. So the, we are accountable. Uh, based on the services that we provide, and the companies are accountable in what they do. If they're going to sit around and they're not going to allow us to push them, it's kind of going to be, it, it's, not a, it's not a good match. So everything that you provide them is documented, et cetera. Yeah. Every, Every service they participate in yes. is documented. Everything that we're doing, the applications, the processes, the check-ins, um, you know, kind of where they're headed, how their business is growing, what they're looking to do. All those types of things are, are tracked. And the reason we track them is because um, other entrepreneurs and residents could get involved and want to come in and do some research on what the company's doing. Yeah. Um, and we want the company to grow. We don't want companies just to come in and be stagnant. Yeah. We want them. You have an end goal. You mentioned earlier, you have an end goal. I, I want to kick them out of the nest. Yes. We Before I got there, there were some businesses, unfortunately, that just didn't fit. They had been there for 15 years. Okay. Well, that's not a, that's not the type of company that is an entrepreneurial company. Maybe it's, you know, it's a legacy company or it's a company that um, was happy where they were. We're looking for companies that kind of want to grow. Yeah. That's the, that's the whole thing. Yeah. It's kind of like it, it needs to be moving all the time. 
Yes. It needs to be moving all the time. It's a conveyor system. And if, if it doesn't move, there's usually a reason, and there's always yeah. time for... Which leads me to maybe to the last point, and then uh, I'll wrap it up. But if I'm an entrepreneur and I'm coming in, regardless of industry, whether I got funding, no funding, whether I got five people, it's just me. You're, when I say you, Bounce is going to interview me. And you're going to place me somewhere based on my specific needs and who I am and where I am in, mm -hmm. my, in my business. And then are you going to kind of put a program together that says, hey, based on where you are, here are the things I think you need to be participating in here. Is that, kind of, is that how it works? Not really. I mean, if, if you're part of the incubator, then you're assigned the entrepreneur in residence. He will help through that process. He'll okay. make that determination. If you're in the accelerator, there's a whole program for that. If you're part of the GROW program, there's a whole program for that. Okay, so you'll so go based through on where I get placed. There's a program then I follow. Correct. That's exactly right. And then uh, <clears throat> you may need other additional resources. You may need yeah. uh, introductions. It's just, it's just so the entrepreneur sense. before he or she comes in, they really need to think about, am I up for this? Cause I am going to get challenged. Yeah. Right. I may have to work a little harder. I may work a little different. Am I willing to answer to somebody who's going to challenge me, right? That's why I started my business, because I don't want to answer to somebody. Now, all of a sudden, here I am. And so there are some considerations that have to be. Right. At the end of the day, the entrepreneur is in charge of the business. We don't take over their business. We don't demand things. We'll suggest them. Hopefully, they'll be comfortable with the entrepreneur residents they're working with. Hopefully, they'll be that relationship with the leader. Pretty, pretty the relationships, good. I think, is very important because I'd like to say they help guide them and they should be thrilled when that business decides to kind of move out. And hopefully, the entrepreneur residents, maybe they'll, they'll add them to, as an advisor going forward. Uh, and some of, unfortunately, the entrepreneurs and residents end up you know, maybe liking certain businesses and spending more time as a result of that, but they have to be able to spend um, equal, yeah. uh, you know, time for most of the businesses to help them kind of grow. Yeah. Well, hey, I, uh, I appreciate you sharing that. And, and I knew a little bit about it, but yeah. I didn't know near what you shared. Um, I think it's an awesome thing that you're doing. I think Thank the you. service and the services are very much needed. Um, I was talking to somebody the other day, and I thought, there is no better time than now to start a new business. 100%. This is the time when chaos is out there. You may have a uh, job change has occurred. You've decided to go for your idea. Yep. Come to Bounce. We'll help you through that process, and uh, we'll be excited to see you kind of grow from that. And yeah. this is the time to kind of do it. If you, if you don't do it now, when are you going to do it? This is it. This is it. I don't think people really often sit back and think about it, but this is really the time. Yeah, and the, the other thing that I think is important is the community has surrounded Bounce and is supported the community leadership. Um, the community itself also has come to support us. Yeah. Um, it's an asset of the community. You know, it's a nonprofit. It's a 501c3. It's not my business. Um, we're the stewards of it. We're watching over things. We're making it grow. We're helping, you know, water it and, 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 and seeing it prosper. But it's a community asset. And we have to all get involved to make that community asset grow. And we will, we will be successful by everybody getting involved. That's the large businesses in Akron, in the surrounding communities. It's the small businesses, the middle businesses. Yeah. Um, we're open to ideas, to changes, to figuring it out, you know, what, what, what this looks like in the new business world with space. Sure. We're, we're open to all those types of ideas. If somebody's sitting out there right now and watching this and they're kind of fit that demographic you've been talking about, that young entrepreneur, mm -hmm. or I shouldn't say, well, I say young, that mean age, but it's new for them, right? This entrepreneurship is new. How, what would be the first step in reaching out? Go to on, bounce? go online. Apply to a program. Your website um, is? Um, Bouncehub.org. Okay. Um, you'll see names or just get in a car and drive down. Drive We're right down. downtown, right across from Gojo uh, on the south right side. Right behind Spaghetti Warehouse. Right behind Spaghetti Warehouse. Yeah. Um, and uh, you just walk in and say, I got an idea. Yeah. What do I do? You can, they can jump in many places, there's make so a many, contact. There's so many places, just make a contact. There's people there that they'll meet with you. Absolutely nobody is turned away. 
It's not like somebody walks in and says, I got this idea. You know what? That's a stupid idea. You got to leave. Every idea is a great idea. Maybe it's not exactly a bounce idea. Maybe it is. But we will direct you accordingly because there's enough programs in the ecosystem to help you yeah. know where to go. Well, hey, thanks for thanks for coming in. This was really good. Yeah, I've, I've enjoyed it. Thanks I, for having me. I know me you're in. busy. I know you're busy. No, and so taking that time. This is important to us. Uh, well, good. Thank hey, you. thanks. Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for listening in. I thought this was a great show today. Um, if you're interested, as Doug mentioned, you can stop right in. You can walk in. You get a smoothie. If they don't give it to you, you tell them Doug said you get a free smoothie. <laughs> right? Is that am I okay? Not right. Okay. No, you got to pay for that smoothie, all but that's right, okay. Okay. Free cup of coffee. You, you get a free cup of coffee. But hey, you can reach out on their website. You can just walk in. There's a lot of entry points. If you're that entrepreneur right now and, and you're sitting back and you're saying, man, I could use some of that resources. I could use some of that support. I could use some coaching, some mentoring. Check them out. That's what they're there for. Thanks for listening in today. If you like shows like this, hit subscribe. We'd like to hear from you. If there's shows you want to hear, reach out to me, dharsh at danharsh.com. I would love to hear from you. Hey, thanks for tuning in.